How's it going, guys? Welcome back to the You Know Adam Same podcast, where you get to know a little bit more about people, passions, and all things business. Today, I'm with Lazare from Honey Cafe. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Uh, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> Uh, how's everything? So um, the reason actually I reached out was because, you know, I started seeing all these posts on uh, social media talking about your cheesecakes and you have phenomenal cheesecakes. They're absolutely the most delicious cheesecake that I've ever had in my life. Um, but you started making these posts about something that you're doing with Gold Belly. Right. So tell me a little bit uh, about that. Well, I like to explain Gold Belly to people as like the Amazon of gourmet food. Okay. Like you just go to go to the Gold Belly website. It has like a little search bar and any kind of food that you want, you can pretty much have it delivered to your door. That's awesome. Yes. It's That's amazing. Awesome. Like the ads started popping up on my Instagram and, you know, I thought about using them for cheesecakes, but I didn't know if we were to that point in the game, like being able to produce enough or the packaging aspect of it. So we just reached out to Gold Belly and pretty much the rest is history. Like they walked us through everything that we needed to do. And, and when, uh, how long did it take for you to kind of like put that project together? You reached out to them when? I would say two to three months mm -hmm. is what it took us to like get vetted with them and send them all the photos they needed, the descriptions, ingredients, and then to get all our packaging stuff together. And you launched to when? We launched two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. Yes. How's that going? It's going great. Like we've sent cheesecakes as far as california they made it their one piece so i count that as a success That's a win. um new york uh arizona texas just we're all over the map and uh that that's amazing you know for for something that's coming out kind of like a, the small town of millen i think that that's huge right you're making a global impact on uh with food which is right. which is great yep. um tell me a little bit more about kind of i guess you know when did you start uh, making these cheesecakes you know where it came from so forth and so on well, cheesecake is my favorite dessert. Okay. Like, that's what I have to tell people. So I, f of course, had to figure out how to bake one. And it probably took me five years to perfect my recipe, just like adding more stuff to the crust or less or, you know, adding more sour cream to make it fluffier. Just because I didn't want necessarily like a dense New York cheesecake. I wanted to make like a Southern style cheesecake that was lighter, fluffier, a little bit sweeter, like everything in the South and just something that was pleasing to my palate and then also friends and family. Mm -hmm. And so when I started my restaurant in, and catering company in 2012. Okay. Okay. So it was supposed to be strictly catering. Well, then everybody was like, oh, we want you to make food. So then we started in the back of a little flower shop in downtown Millen, super tiny with like three tables. And so I offered cheesecake as my dessert. Well, I had my great aunt. My grandmother's sister, I had her old KitchenAid mixer. I could make two cheesecakes at a time, right, in the mixer. So I'd make two, then I'd make two more, and the old gas oven that I'd bought for the restaurant would just scorch them like it cooked so unevenly, like it was a hot mess. So I would make the cheesecakes at the restaurant in this KitchenAid, take them to my house, and they would cook for five hours in my home oven. Okay. Because low and slow is okay. the way to go. Okay. And we don't do a water bath. I know everybody asks about that, so okay. I like to throw that out there. And so it was just a pure labor of love. And there were many nights where I was up at, you know, 12 o'clock, taking them out of the oven, letting them rest for a couple of hours, then getting them in the fridge. Like, there were tears. But now, you know, we make as many as 63 at a time. Wow, so that's that, amazing. And we grew little by little. Like I had the mini KitchenAid, then I got like a maybe a eight-quart mixer, and then now I've graduated this big one that I've actually fit myself in the mixer bowl. That's so, awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> so that's how you grow. Just to, And they're all used. Like they come from, you know, school auctions. We bought them from kitchens or just we'll find them on Facebook and you know that you can tell they've got a lot of wear and tear, but they mix those cheesecakes right up. So, that's right. Yeah, uh, that that's amazing. You know, uh, a lot of stories uh, start start off with you know humble beginnings, right? You 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 started with a mixer that's only <laughs> able to produce two, and then you're all the way up to sixty three at a time now. Yes. Um, you said something in there that kind of like piqued my interest about. Uh, you know, you, you basically set them, they have need to bake for five hours. Does it always take that long for a cheesecake? No, we've scaled it back to three. Okay. So, yeah, we're, so we're slowly doing improving. Good. Very yeah. nice. Very nice. And then now, um, you know, with, with gold belly in the mix, uh, you're, you're sending across kind of like the entire, 
America, right? right. Uh, do you have, is that, does that go international as well? Or is it just mainly in the States? Just mainly in the States right now. But we, I'll tell you about the time that we were getting signed up with Gold Belly, one of our cheesecakes from the Honey 2 Facebook page, the cinnamon roll to be specific, it wasn't some fabulous picture. It's just one that the girls took a picture of and posted that day. It went viral. And the last time I looked, it had had, 250,000 shares. That's crazy. And it all just happened right there together. Cause I was like, how are we going to really get the attention? I mean, Gold Belly does a lot of its own promoting, you sure. know, and advertising for our business. But I was like, we need, we need, you know, some attention brought to it otherwise. And so that went viral and we've got people from all over and especially other countries. Tell me about that. So you said that did Gold Belly have anything to do with that? Like about for, for getting that information out? No, this okay. was before we had, you know, gotten to that point with them, I think. And I've asked several of my like internet guru friends and they're like, it just happens sometimes where it just rides the wave of the internet and that's how it works. That's right. That's right. It's crazy. Um, how many different types of cheesecakes do you make? Well, I have a friend that I catered her wedding at Beaver Creek, and she keeps up with how many flavors. And okay. so I'll add another one. She'll say, you're up to 106 now. 106? So I, I don't, it may be more than that. I'd have to ask Lucy, Lucy sure. Smith. I love her so much, but she, she keeps a tally on all of them. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, for those cheesecakes, are all 106 available online? Oh, no, not okay. at all. Like, okay. we only offer four through Gold Belly and... I'll tell you a little bit about why we chose the flavors that we chose. Um, we offer the double crust, which I just want to do something novel. It's like you've got, everybody loves that good bottom crust. Well, it's on top too. So okay. you've got two crusts. That's and amazing. so simple. Every That's our best seller so far online. And then we do a peach crumble, a blueberry crumble, and a brown sugar pecan. And the reason I chose those three is because it's really important to me to bring other people into this whole situation. Like I want to support local farmers and feature Georgia grown products. Wow. So we're peaches, Georgia peaches, of course. Okay. And we use a Braswell's peach jam in okay. that. And they assured me that those peaches came from Georgia. Absolutely. And then we use um, blueberries from Mr. Dick Bine in Waynesboro. Okay. He's my blueberry man. And then uh, the brown sugar pecan, we have a local farmer, Wade Parker. I can just, I could text Wade right now and say, hey, Wade, I need some um, pecans. And he'd have them here, you know, today or tomorrow. And we're working on a peanut flavor because that's, to me, the other big Georgia Ag product. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm a farmer's daughter, so um, it's just near and dear to my heart. You can't put cotton in a cheesecake. But, right. you know, we've got peanut. My day is a peanut farmer. He grew peanuts this year, as a matter of fact. So. That's amazing. So, you know, that's such a, uh amazing thing that you're doing in terms of, like, bringing more attention to this area, right? I, I think a lot of times businesses get caught up so much in, like, okay, well, Let's just make the most money that we can. But it seems that you're going out and acquiring these great ingredients to put into your cheesecake so everybody can grow together. Everybody reaps, reaps the benefits. I definitely think so. Mm -hmm. Just being from a small town in a small community, you know, I just think we need to spotlight anything we can that's good here. So, so let's uh, dive into kind of like the, the story of you being a, a farmer's daughter, daughter. Tell me a little bit of kind of, of, of your background, uh, what it was like growing up and how'd you end up being the, the queen of cheesecake? Well, you know, I grew up as a farmer's daughter, but I feel like that, you know, my parents always pushed us to, to not just see like our life there, but my mom always wanted us to cook different foods and try different things. And they just pushed us to go as far as we wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I finished high school in Jenkins County, graduated. I went to college at Georgia Southern and I did that for two years. And I realized I'd probably never pass college algebra. <laughs> so I was like, I've got to, to rethink this. And also I didn't want to be listening to professors and just sitting in classrooms. Like I want to actually have my hand in the food. Mm -hmm. So I told my mom, I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to go to Aguchi Tech and okay. do their culinary arts program. Okay. So were you cooking, uh, at this point, like uh, throughout high school, were, were you in the kitchen at all? I've always cooked. And okay. like my daddy's daddy, like he had what our family called the kitchen house at the farm. Like most people would call it a clubhouse or a pond house. We called it the kitchen house because okay. that's what he did is he cooked. Like he canned, jarred anything that 
he made homemade wine sometimes, mm-hmm. like chicken and dumplings, fried fat back, wow. like biscuits with the cane syrup, all that. And I just always enjoyed those times the most. And I enjoyed that feeling I had when we were all together and eating and celebrating and all the men were cutting up. And so I just knew that I wanted to somehow create that into a job for myself. Okay. And um, also like my dad and my uncles went to eat lunch every day and my granddaddy went sometimes too. And so it was always a treat that they let us go to eat lunch with them. Uh And so you know, if we're sitting at a table, it was just the boisterous, fun atmosphere of them cutting up and everybody that walked in the door, them hollering, hey, you know, how's it going? Or like ribbing them, like, you know, just aggravating them, I guess you could say. That's right. And they're like this here now. Like they have the round table over here. Mm-hmm. That's daddy's table. And Got like, you. that's where they sit. And my employees in the back can say, we can always tell when your daddy and your uncles are here because it's just like, it gets so loud out front because they just have a good time that's everywhere they go. That's an amazing story. Uh, mm-hmm. So you, we're, we're up to uh, college. You're at... Geechee Tech now. Yes. And so uh, you finished finished school. Yes. And then what? Well, I did an internship at Leanne's Cafe. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I like that was my introduction into like the real world because I feel like they kind of coddled you in the kitchen and you had all the time in the world to do what, you know, your assignments and recipes. And I just specifically remember, I mean, I was the only chick in the kitchen. That's what they called me. And it was a bunch of guys, and they were really sweet to me and looked after me. But also, if I'd put my hand on my hip, they'd be like, uh, uh, they'd make that noise because they said, if you if your hand's on your hip, you're not doing anything. Mm-hmm. So I quickly learned to, like, dive right in there. But also, I feel like my boss, I think he thought that I'd never make it because he even told me that. But it was like one night he had sent everybody home because – it was just dead. Okay. And so he kept himself and one server up front. And then I was the only person with the dishwasher in the kitchen. Okay. And we just got slammed. And I rocked the line. I mean, I did appetizer. And he couldn't come help me because he was helping the girls out front. And so at the end of the night, he was like, I honestly thought you'd never do it. But I don't think he would have have allowed me to uh-huh. if we hadn't have been in that dire situation. Sure. He didn't have a choice. So it it helped both of us. How, so. how much did you grow through that experience? I mean, I felt like I was a different person. Afterwards? Yeah. Okay. And so I I gained a lot of confidence more than anything Mm -hmm. from that. And so, you know, I worked there and then I went to another kitchen there. That's the mixer back there. That's okay. That's that old dinosaur. We're we're making cheesecakes right now. (laughs) Don't mind. Don't mind it. It sounds like a dog howling. (laughs) Anyway, or something in distress. Um, Anyway, and so then I worked at um, Statesboro Brews in Statesboro. And that was like my first official kitchen. Statesboro Brews. I'm not familiar with that. What is that? It was a, okay, this, this, this is how things come full circle. Do you know where Honey 2 is downtown? I do. Okay. Well, not in the Honey 2, right above the Honey 2 building Uh was a little piano bar called Statesboro Brews. Okay. And it was like a martinis tapas. Wow. Like, which was very progressive for Statesboro at the time. I didn't realize there was spaces for, for restaurants up there. Well, it's lost now. Okay. And it was mostly lost then, but there was a, there was a restaurant up there. Oh, wow. It was crazy. And uh, I learned a lot. And, you know, like I said, it was my first kitchen and, like I chalk it up all as a good experience because I met so many people Mm -hmm. there, people who are even customers of mine now you know, mm-hmm. through catering and buying casseroles and cheesecakes and chicken salad. As a matter of fact, I saw one of our best customers at the piano bar, Statesboro Brews, was at one of the weddings the other night. And, oh, wow. And his granddaughter is now a wedding planner that I work with. So things come full circle in a short amount of time. I think that's one of the benefits of living in kind of like a, a, a small town. It has that feel where everybody totally. is like some, somehow connected with each other. Definitely. Uh, so... Tell me about more about this Statesboro Brews place. Like that sounds so wild to me. What what did that look like? Well, I mean, that building's probably what close to a hundred years old. Mm-hmm. So it was beautiful. It had the exposed brick walls, the old wood floors, and I just specifically remember those wood floors in the kitchen because the kitchen was this tiny cubicle, and every night we had to get down with the shop vac okay. and and vacuum out all those cracks in the floor because you can imagine how much food would get down in those cracks sure. and then it was always some kind of plumbing shenanigans going on because i mean it's an old building like it, but it was so much fun like uh-huh. I, I met so many fun people that i still follow like on instagram now sure. and i still keep up with them so it, it was stressful but it was it was fun too uh when did you leave statesboro bruce I don't know the exact year. Um, 
I'm bad with dates like okay. that. But I worked there for, for a year. And then I went to Beaver Creek Plantation okay. outside of Twin Cities. So I pretty much completely switched gears. Like okay. I went from that whole nighttime chef, like bar scene, and I was just completely burnt out. Mm -hmm. And so I went to Beaver Creek to be their chef there, and it's just a hunting plantation. Okay. And so, you know, I was, I'd gone from doing more like a fine dining type thing, and now I was like in the school of Paula Dean. Like I had okay. all the Paula Dean cookbooks and, you know, just other Southern chefs and just trying to figure out how to cook that way. And I, I mean, I, I've had experience cooking like that, but like my mother wasn't one to like fry chicken. I've never known my mom to fry chicken on the bone. Like okay. she's just like, I don't do that. And it smells up my house, okay. you know? So she, she cooks Southern cooking, but not necessarily, she makes the best gravy I've ever had. Okay. You don't mess with mama's gravy. <laughs> um, but she'll also, you know, she makes eggs with sauce as my brother calls it as eggs Benedict. Okay. So she can do that okay. too. She can okay. do a little bit of it all, but, um, I love Beaver Creek. Like three brothers owned it, the web the webs and Mr. Jack and Jerry and Ike. And it was like having three more daddies. Oh yeah. I loved them. But now I did want to choke them sometimes too, because they'd go in there and fry fish on Friday. Every Friday was like he Mr. Jerry would come in and say, So and so caught some jackfish or some catfish and we'd have to fry them and oh, then it, there'd be God. cornmeal everywhere. And but I loved them to death. Uh -huh. And it was and I really enjoyed cooking for all those men because in general men are just happy if you if you feed them and it's good <laughs> they're not picky they don't care and I just loved all our members too like we had some members from Georgia Power two guys that came mm -hmm. um Randy and Mike and they they were my favorites uh -huh. and they knew that too I'd cook them anything they wanted so it was about me just looking after those guys pampering those guys making them their favorite dish so there was there a set menu that was created or was it more kind of like you had the ability to create whatever it is that they that I they asked the, for well I had the ability to create anything like I do breakfast some days my least favorite meal I don't even like to eat breakfast because I just don't like to cook it it's okay. just not my thing I don't get rolling until about 10 o'clock every morning like all the juices don't get flowing and so I did lunch like a buffet lunch every day and it was like down home you know fried pork chops fried chicken rice and tomatoes but then also and some days it might be five people some days it might be 50 people just depending on how many quail hunters they had booked for that day and then also we'd have groups that would spend the night so mm -hmm. that's when I could really do like the great plated meals you know with like steaks or okay. fish or you know anything like that and and that's where I started catering too I didn't know that I could cater at all until like they hired me and they finished the new lodge like a few weeks after they hired me. And so I, the youngest brother, his daughter, Claire, who's my age, she was getting married at the lodge. Like that was the rush to get, you know, okay. get that finished. So they could get her married and then go on into quail season. And Mr. Ike said, well, we've got to feed, you know, three or 400 people for Claire's wedding. Can you cater it? And I was like, let's do it. Oh, okay. And so I had a, a lady named Miss Claire Donaldson. She's from in between Metter and Beaver Creek. And she's always been my dad and my uncle's farm bureau agent. Okay. And she's catered. I mean, she's just the known caterer in Swainsboro, Metter. Everybody just knows Claire Donaldson. And they'd say, well, you, you know, you need to talk to Claire. She can da-da-da. And I think they liked Claire, too, because she didn't, like, take any slack off them. Okay. Like, if they cuss, she'd cuss them right back, you know? <laughs> and she knows that, and I really love her for that. And so I'd call Miss Claire, play 50 times a day, and say, if I'm doing chicken salad and pastry cups for 300 people, like, how much did I need? And mm -hmm. she helped me figure out, like, the numbers part of it. And then I just went from there. Like, that's a lot of trial and error to know sure. how much to cook, especially for a large group of people. Mm -hmm. So that's where I really... And then we started doing... Okay, that was the the time the economy completely tanked was okay. when I started. 2008, 2009? Yes. Okay. And so they had built this nice new lodge and the economy just tanked. Mm -hmm. And so we really had to rely on weddings there to you know, get us through that bad time. So we started booking weddings because it was a big pretty place and a new venue. And even though the economy was bad, people are still going to get married. Sure. You know, and they can justify spending those bigger amounts of money because it's like a one-time thing is That's what right. people think. That's so right. I worked there for five years and then my husband and I, got married in 2012 Congratulations! and that's when I started my business. So it was a lot that happened in 2012. Nice. So yeah. in 2012, uh, after you got married, uh, did you make a conscious decision to, what, what, what was the thought process behind that? Well, just being married and all, 
I wanted to be able to make my own hours. Okay. So that was kind of the, you know, like I'd have to leave. Like I, we had a family vacation in Hilton Head and I had to leave early because I had to come back to do a wedding at Beaver Creek. And I didn't mind doing it because that was my job. But I just wanted the ability to, mm -hmm. if I scheduled a weekend for vacation, that I could actually go with my family. Mm -hmm. And I have, you know, two stepsons to their um, 18 and 20 okay. right now. And so I just want to be able to spend more time with everybody and have like more of a family atmosphere. Mm -hmm. But I think I probably work now. I mean, work more now than I've ever worked before. <laughs> I like, was going to say that, right? Yeah, like, like, you know, we, we think in our minds, oh, you know, it's great owning a business because you don't have to be there all the time. But wow. then it's like the reverse of that. Totally. Yeah. Totally. So uh, at that point, you decided, you, you decided to start your own uh, restaurant. And was that, you said downtown Millen was which, where you first started? Yes. In the back of this little flower gift shop called the Charm Barn. Okay. They had had like a little lunch spot there at one time. And so... They had like maybe a three compartment sink in there, uh -huh. and so but I had to buy all the other like pieces of equipment, which was like a six burner gas stove mm -hmm. and oven, and a refrigerator, like a two door like silver refrigerator, and like I catered meals for like three hundred people out of there. I don't know how I did it. Like I I honestly don't like we had. Robbins and Morton, who is a construction company, they built the Carbo plant. It's not called Carbo anymore, but it was, they built the Carbo plant. Mm -hmm. And so if they, if their guys went so many months without an accident, they'd feed all the guys building the plant. Okay. And so those guys just loved us. One of the guys was from Savannah and he was just like, I think that they knew that I was just starting out and they wanted to help me. So they'd give me those meals for 300 people every, you know, four months or however. And that's how I really like that was the beginning of building my business mm -hmm. was just feeding those people. Like I said, we would, I know I specifically remember having to do a Thanksgiving meal and I think we grilled the hams and the turkeys cause I couldn't have fit them in the oven. I don't okay. know how I cooked enough dressing in that little <laughs> tiny oven. Like it's still, I, I think I probably blocked it out. Sure. <laughs> it was traumatic, sure. but we made it through. So <laughs> I think a lot of times by being able to find the solution, right? That's what, what our responsibility is as business owners is, you know, a project is presented to us and we have to figure out, okay, how are we going to make this work? And All I right. think time and time again, you've been able to do that. So yeah, uh, that's great. So uh, after the flower shop, then at what point did you come over to the space that we're in right now? Well, there was a space in between. Okay. So the only, like we looked all over town because I just had to, I had to have more room. Mm -hmm. You know, I had outgrown my spot. And so the only other place in town, we knew there had been a restaurant that was connected to Thompson's Corner Gas Station, but nothing had ever really worked there. And I was just like, no, I don't want to be connected to a gas station. But my husband's just like, just go look at it. Mm -hmm. So we walked in. I was like, we'll do it because it already had a hood system in there. And, you know, so we, we rented that space for like two years and it was great. We grew so much there and, you know, people would always send me these little gifts or whatever that said, you know, you're in the South when the best restaurant in town is connected to a gas oh, station. I love so that. I just embraced that. And, I, you I know, we that. did lots of catering. We grew a lot there. And then this place that we're sitting in now, like was, offered like in foreclosure mm -hmm. and I just knew I wanted my own space mm -hmm. because I didn't know what would happen with renting that space and the par parking situation was kind of crazy and so we went to the courthouse square and bid on this mm -hmm. and we got it and so here we are now very nice yeah uh all all through throughout this time you know you you mentioned that you started the cheesecakes in the back of the flower shop mm -hmm. so uh even at the restaurant that you were connected to the uh gas station were you producing a ton of cheesecakes at that point as well yes okay like anybody that came to eat lunch, you know, that is what they wanted. They came in for the cheesecake for dessert. Like we'd offer peach cobbler here and there, but I had like a little deli case up front where we'd put six or eight or 10 cheesecakes in there. And that's the first place people would come to is the cheesecakes. Mm. Uh, with all that said, you know, one of the questions I want to ask you is, um, what is food to you? People often ask why I name my company Honey. And I just said, because I just wanted it to represent food in its purest form. Just good, uncomplicated food. And I'm just not fussy. And I just want it to taste good and be a reflection of, you know, me and my family and how I was brought up. But I also love trying other things too. Mm -hmm. So I just think food is comfort for sure. I love that. Um, you know, with the cheesecakes, you mentioned that it's it's food at its purest form. Um, what 
sets your cheesecakes apart from any other cheesecakes in the world? Well, I would just say that our cheesecakes are a little bit sweeter. They're fluffier. They're lighter. Like, we touch every single one of them. Nothing's made, you know, everything's made pretty much by hand. Like, yeah, we have a mixer, but we've got our hands in there scraping the sides because it's got to have a certain feel. And, like, my girls that are making them now, I'm like, that's not fluffy enough. Like, let it go a couple more rounds. And they've even gotten to where they know what it's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. Or, like, the crust. They know that, like, they're mixing the crust by hand with gloves on. And they just have that feel that they know that that's how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And and where did you get the idea for the, the double-sided uh, crust from? Was that something that you've seen out there? Or was that just something that came to you? Uh, I, had, like, I feel like a lot of our ideas just come, mm -hmm. like, come from not mistakes, but just, like, what you have kind of lying around mm -hmm. and so I had some extra crust one day and I said let's put this on top and see and I was like everybody loves the crust and so that's what we did and now that it's our best seller online so give the people what know. they want yeah absolutely I love that <laughs> um so you know with, with with all the cheesecake that you're putting out and all the goodness that you're putting out into the world um, what is some advice that you would give to somebody that is, you know, that is making food at home that they want to share with the world, um, but don't quite know how? Well, I'll tell you this. So I think it was last Thursday, the phone rang during lunch. One of the girls brought it to me because Dolan's is open for lunch down here. And we kind of have the phone, sa same phone number where it's growing pains. But anyway, so they said, this lady wants to talk to you about cheesecakes. Well, her name was Angie from Iowa. And she was like, I just want to pick your brain. I'm trying to get my cheesecakes out there. Da, 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 da. And I was like, Angie, just hold on one second. I was like, let me take your name and number down. I was like, I can't talk to you right now because the phone's constantly beeping with people wanting to order barbecue. Sure. So Don't we, call during lunch. Yeah, That's the one word of advice. <laughs> yes, totally. <laughs> the, the one that every restaurant owner wants you to know. So I had to go with to cater a Georgia Southern game. It was last Thursday. And so I drove my own car and that's a lot of times that's where I can get any thinking or talking done is when I'm in my car by myself and I can just go. So I called Angie back and we talked all the way from Millen to Statesboro. And I just told her everything I knew because I just think people should help people. Mm -hmm. Like I've reached out to so many people and not that they've been less than helpful, but I had to do a lot of figuring out on my own. And I just I just told her, I was like, I wish somebody would have told me. Mm. So I told her everything I knew about what I knew and about Gold Belly. And Gold Belly really has been like a huge help to me. Like they helped me figure out things that I've been trying to figure out for five years. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, I told Angie everything that I knew. And I feel like we're friends now and she's an Iowa. And that's just part of the glory of the internet and Gold belly and the the whole nine yards is just getting to meet and talk to different people. Uh, that let me get like maybe one or two tips that you kind of like threw her way in in terms of like I guess how to how to get your product uh, into the world. Well, since the very beginning, I've you know, st um, Facebook has been like one of my main forms of advertising. Like it's free. Why wouldn't you use it? Do you realize how many people you can reach mm -hmm. like through this avenue or any kind of social media, Instagram. And I think just always be willing to like talk to people mm -hmm. and learn like you can. And like, I have, you know, goals, you know, like I love to watch a uh, Southern bake pie mm -hmm. from Atlanta. Um, Amanda Wilbanks, you know, I've watched her success story from the very beginning and, you know, I try to emulate things that she's done. Um, Callie Mori from uh, Callie's Hot Little Biscuits okay, in yeah. Charleston. Yeah, I love like, that. They're, I'm just like a fangirl of them. Sure. And like I watched them from, you know, making biscuits in her little store in Charleston. And now she has them, you oh, know, in grocery amazing. stores like all over the place. Well, what do you think is about that, that that's made her be, be able to grow in, uh, in that way? Like, I honestly don't know. I think she just has a really good, simple product that she doesn't overcomplicate, mm. you know? And I think that she will get in the, like, you always see videos of Callie, like, in the kitchen, you know, with flour up to her elbows, and she's right in there with her people just working right alongside of them. Mm -hmm. And um, she cooks at home, too. You can tell she's a real foodie. Like, like, my mother and I were floored because she went to Sonic and bought all her employees, like, 
cups of crunchy Sonic ice. Uh-huh. Like that was their reward. And I was like, well, what about the tater tots? And she, she said that she had never been to Sonic before. And uh-huh. I was like, this woman has never been and had a Sonic tater tot before. I mean, we like to eat, but we're junk food junkies too. Like I'll sure. eat a corn dog or I'll <laughs> eat something fancy, but I just couldn't <laughs> believe it. It just floored me. But I think she's like a really, like she cooks everything from scratch at home. So, sure. but that's not me. But I mean, I appreciate both aspects of that. <laughs> Uh, one other question I have is really kind of like detailing about Gold Belly. So you mentioned that they've been uh, great during the online uh, process. Um, you know, when did you, I guess, make the decision to reach out to them? Well, after we decided to close the restaurant portion of our business, Honey Cafe, you know, we shut down in March for COVID Mm -hmm. and we stayed shut down for for two weeks and we reopened Dolan's and we reopened Honey 2 in Statesboro. And I was like, this is my opportunity. I've always wanted to focus more on cheesecakes and wholesale and catering. And like, there are so many horrible things about COVID, but Mm -hmm. I've tried to take away some of the good things, Mm. which has made me just slow down and realize what's important and that you You can't do everything and you don't have to do everything to be successful. You can let some things go to make room for better things to happen. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I decided to reach out to Gold Belly because I felt like I had more time to focus on my cheesecakes. Mm -hmm. And when I reached out to him, I was like, we'll see if this can even be a thing. And when they entertained us and said yes, I was like, what? And so... So how does it work? Did did they ever taste the cheesecake or they just knew that your product was amazing? What's that like? Well, we had a rep that, you know, we started, he called me, like we filled out some little online form. Then we had a rep that reached out and I talked to him and I really liked him. He was really informative. And so we just started the process of sending him things. And I'm sure they looked at our website and our social media, you Mm -hmm. know, that they stalked us. And so then we sent him like a test cake Mm -hmm. or whatever. We sent him several test cakes. Like the first one we sent we he sent us the shipping label because that's how it works. Like people go straight to their website, order, pay everything. They shoot us a shipping label, and we have like what's called the Gold Belly dashboard, which is just our little place that we go that has all our orders and everything on it. And so he sent us the shipping label, and we shipped to him. Mm-hmm. And we did it at first overnight with dry ice. Well. We tried to get the shipping costs down for our customers. So now we ship with ice packs on the bottom and then dry ice on top so we can do a two-day ship. Oh, okay. Yeah. So now you've been able to figure that out. I remember yep. earlier on when we when we had discussions, it was like, okay, well, dry ice is like a major component of it. Yes. Um, but now I think that you guys have been able to sh- uh, cut down on the shipping costs because of that. We have, and I just feel like we have the volume now or we're starting to get the volume now. Like, we have two huge containers that are this tall of dry ice in the uh-huh. back. Whoever it, thought. Right here? Yeah, back okay. there in the back. It's pretty cool. Like, before, I was having to pack up a cheesecake here, run it to Ellis Meat Market, buy dry ice, then run it to the UPS store. And, like, that just wasn't a feasible way to conduct business if you're shipping, you know, 8 or 10 or 20 cheesecakes or more a day. So... Now we have our own dry ice and y'all order because I'm just ready. To, like, <laughs> I can ship for you today. Y'all come on. Let's try this out. What, uh, where do people go in order? They just go straight to Gold Belly. Okay. We also have links on our website, honeycatering.com, that'll shoot you straight to Gold Belly. And how do you think, uh, what's the best way for people to keep up with you and everything that you're doing in your journey? Well, I have my own personal Instagram is Honey Chef. And like, I like to share recipes on there because it's a real passion of mine because I like taking pictures and creating pretty food and you'll probably see some pictures of some dogs on there and my husband and just other products that I like or just things that I think people need to know. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I don't offer too many like personal opinions about anything because nobody wants to hear that. But you know, if I think there's a good fun product or a good food product that people need to know about, like I give them shout outs. Very nice. So, and what do you think? uh, One last statement, you know, uh, where, what's the dream with, your cheesecakes where do you plan on taking that i just want more people to be able to taste our cheesecakes like i don't want to get so huge where they're made by like machines that just fill up the pans and people don't touch them i don't you know necessarily want to be in costco or huge places like i just want it to be a really good handmade product that maybe people might pay a little bit more for just because they know that it's sourced from local products trying to help local farmers and people actually make them and it's creating jobs for people in a community that needs that. Mm -hmm. And I, and I hope we can always stay in Midland. Like I plan to do that because 
I just think Millen needs us and Millen's been good to us for sure. I'm so excited to see what the future holds. I think, you know, it, it is an amazing tasting cheesecake. It's probably one of the best that I've had. Um, but, you know, thank you so much for spending some time with us. Is there anything else that you would like to tell the audience? People should just, you know, chase their dreams. And if, if you've got a small idea, you can make it to a big business. Fantastic. Right. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, you. I think that's our, our show and uh, looking forward to everything that you're going to be able to accomplish in the future. Thanks, Adam. All right. Thank you. <laughs>